Hi, welcome to Robot Culture. I'm your host, Kevin Isley. Today, we're gonna to talk about why I bought the Bone Conducting Aftershocks Trex Air headphones. If you're like me, when you're out on a solo ride on country roads, maybe doing some pretty big climbs, you like to hear music while you ride. I enjoy more of hip hop music when I ride because I like that driving bass. But I've always used earbuds. My last headphones were Bose noise canceling earbuds and I liked the noise canceling part of it so I could turn the volume way down and not have a lot of wind in my ears. It sounded really good. Before that, I had the Apple earbuds that came with my iPhone and those never stayed in my ears. In the state of California, you can only have one earbud in at a time and it's supposed to be in your right ear so on your left side you can hear cars coming. This gives you a mono sound and it sounds horrible. So for Father's Day, I said I wanted the Aftershocks Trex Air and my wife got it for me. And I was super happy because now instead of listening to mono sound and following the law, I can listen to stereo sound transmitted through the bones in my head. So how does bone conduction work? First, let's talk about how we hear. When sound is made, it creates sound waves. Those sound waves travel through the air and then they go down your ear canal. Once they hit the eardrum, the eardrum vibrates and sends vibrations to your cochlea. Your cochlea is attached to your auditory nerve and it translates those vibrations into sound that your brain can then interpret. But we also listen through bone conduction. Our skull is made to receive sound waves, vibrate the bones, and send it to your cochlea to transmit into sound. In fact, when you talk, the noise you hear from your voice is bone conduction because you're sending the sound waves away from you and not into your ears. That's why your voice sounds different to you than it does to other people. Although bone conduction right now seems like a new technology, it's been around forever. And the earliest documented cases of bone conduction for hearing can be traced back to 2 AD. But in the 15th century, a mathematician discovered a way to put metal to your head up against a sound making device for the deaf and this worked. But the most famous case came in the 18th century when deaf composer Ludwig von Beethoven would attach a rod to his piano and then he put it on his jawbone, clench his teeth and then play. This allowed him to hear the music he was composing. So here it is, my Aftershocks Trex Air. These are amazing. They fit around your neck right there. And when you put them on, they're really comfortable. You can see this is how they fit right there. On the right side, this is where you turn it on and this is how you adjust the volume. And on the left side, this is how you answer the phone. Boom. That is also where you turn on your music and turn off your music when you don't want to hear it anymore. But being a cyclist, we wear helmets, unlike runners. And over time, the straps of your helmet and your sunglasses all sitting on top of your headphones starts to create some sort of discomfort. So when I reach the top of the climb, I usually take off my headphones, put them in my back pocket, and I go down on the mountain. There are certain situations where the head shocks do not work well, and that is when there's a lot of ambient noise, like when I'm crossing over the Golden Gate Bridge on my bike. I just don't even play music at that point because the sound of the cars, the constant wind, I don't hear my music, so I turn it off. This is also true when descending. The air rushing past your ears is louder than the music, so you're losing out. So it's really a good time to put them in your back pocket. The aftershocks are sweat resistant, so don't worry about getting them too wet. Supposedly, they will not fail, and they haven't yet. If you are a true audiophile, aftershocks don't have absolutely the best sound. You're gonna get that from over-ear headphones or from earbuds have a much better sound. But when you have them on, you can't hear cars coming and there's nothing to me that sounds better than hearing a car coming up behind me while listening to the driving bass of Jay-Z. I don't know if you're like me, but when I climb, I like to chew gum. It's just one of those things that helps distract my mind from the situation I'm in, which is usually pain. But as I engage my masseter muscles right here, that sound goes to more bass and then when you release your masseter muscles, it goes a little more tinny. So it goes from bass to tinny, bass to tinny, bass to tinny. This is something I don't think they'll ever be able to fix, but I don't mind it very much because I can hear cars 
coming up behind me. And I know I want to get home and see my family after a really good ride. So, as the holiday season is approaching, if you're looking for a good gift for yourself or one for a loved one who is an endurance athlete and likes to do their sports outside on the open roads, I cannot recommend the Aftershocks Trek Air enough. These are amazing. They're priced at $150, but recently I've seen them for $120 on the Aftershocks website. So this is a good price for an excellent product that will allow you to listen to the music you like while performing your endurance sport. Well, I think that just about covers it. Why I purchased the Aftershocks Trex Air bone conducting headphones. This is a really good purchase and it allows me to listen to the music I like while riding my bike. If you like this episode, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I'm on YouTube, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Strava. I'm everywhere, people. And until the next time, I hope to see you out there on the road. Another benefit to fucking having fucking no cables. Oh.